I do not praise you since you come together not for the better but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and in part I believe it. For there must also be factions among you that those who are approved may be recognized among you. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others. And one is hungry and another is drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. That the, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And we had, when he had given thanks he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, among you and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we were judged, we were, ch we were chastised by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. You may see, be seated. 
Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. I praise you and worship you today, Father God. I thank you for being God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. Oh, Father God, I bless your name today because you are worthy of all of my blessings and all of my praise. Oh, God, I ask that you just dip me one more time, Father God, and bring me a brand new, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Oh, Father God, I ask that you allow my lips to speak only your words. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 I really don't have a title for this message. And I believe if I had to give you one, it would be for better or for worse. How many of you have heard those words before? For better or for worse. Most times it's when a man and woman are standing before the man of God and they're giving their, well, their life over to each other and they, they declare before the company that for better or for worse they're going to stick together. They're going to be there until death do you part. But when you read about for better or worse in the book of Corinthians, it, it has a different connotation. It just means something totally different. And the truth of the matter is, um, I don't think we really think about communion in, a, in the way in which we should. And I believe that this is what Corinthians is, the, the, the letter to the Corinthians is saying. Partaking of communion is an outward showing of an inward bond to Christ. It is a reminder of what Christ did for us on the cross and redeeming us back to the Father. We as believers must come to the understanding that communion is an ordinance and that the ordinances of Christ, if they do not make us better, will make us worse. When Christ said, do this, he was, not, he was commanding an action. He was not suggesting a snack. The devil keeps us in bondage by tricking us into thinking our, wit, our wrongs will cause harm if we take communion. This is true, as laid out in 1 Corinthians verses 29 through 31. But what the devil does not speak about is that there is a remedy for this judgment. And that is where a little truth becomes dangerous. The remedy to the situation when we hold is when we hold a mirror up to our own lives, our own actions, see our wrongdoings for what they are, sin, and seek forgiveness for that sin. We are to examine ourselves, make right what is wrong, then eat and drink as commanded. Our biggest problem is the same for those dealing with any addiction, the first step, which is admitting that there's a problem. We, mm, okay. We have a way of, we, we, we feel like because we've been in church and we've been in Christ and we have no sin, but the word of God says that the person that says that they are without sin is a liar. You've already said. We think that we are justified in the way we think, in the way we feel. Our only justification is through Christ. Come on. Let's look at some of those problems, those sins that we present don't exist. 1 John 3.15 says, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Exodus 20, thou shalt not kill. One commandment broken already. We say we love God whom we've never seen, but we can't stand our brother and sister or sister who we see every day. Galatians 5, 19, 21 
and 26. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 26, let us not be desirous in fame glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Get in where you fit in. How many of us have talked about our brother or sister behind their back? Come on. Come on. Look, notice I put my hand up before I even got started, right? I'm going to tell you the truth. How many of us have been envious of someone else? Come on, tell us truth. Sister Cindy, I envy you. I wish I could play the keyboard like you. <laughs> I turned it on today and sat down and act like I could play something. I wish I could play. Even though it's not a malicious envy, it's still envy. I commend her. God gifted her with the ability to hear music, sit down and play it. He didn't give me that gift. Envy. Sin. But I came by to tell you that it's counterproductive to show a problem, to point out a problem, and not give you a solution. I'm not going to be before you long. Because I don't feel, I don't believe I have to be before you long for you to get the point. For us to get the point. For me to get the point. 